because uh, this portrait captures everything that Peter warned them about. And I wanna show you uh, in Luke chapter 12, what I call Christ's portrait of a materialism blinded person. And uh, in Luke 12, and, and I told you this a few weeks ago, the 12th chapter of Luke starts out with the largest crowd Jesus ever had. It says myriads of people in verse one. And, uh, and someone asks a question in verse 13. Look what they say. They say, teacher, now imagine there are thousands of people and one person yells, teacher, trying to shame their relative. My brother won't divide the inheritance. And Jesus used what the crowd heard to answer a question. So look at verse 14. So Jesus said to him, man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? Then he said to them all, verse, four, or verse 15, take heed and beware of covetousness. What's covetousness? It's, it's what I'm also calling materialism, that one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Materialism says your life is better if you have this and this and this and more and more and more. And then we began coveting for it. Then he spoke, verse 16, a parable to them saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater and I will store my crops and my goods. In verse 19, I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will all those things be which you have stored up? Verse 21, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Whoa. That man was blinded by materialism. He was successful, and there's nothing wrong with success. In verse 16, he was diligent. He was looking at space and storage needs. In verse 17, he was conservative. He didn't blow it, he saved it. I mean, he was the quintessential thrift, you know? And verse 19, he was a retirement planner, and we all need to think about winter. You know, the danger was not what he was, but what he wasn't. There's nothing wrong with his resume. The problem was not his success, it was not his diligence, it wasn't his conservatism, it wasn't his careful planning for the future. All those elements are good and wise. The danger was not what he was, but what he wasn't. What's absent from the story is God. God is absent. He left God out of his thoughts. Look at verse 16 and 17, he thought within himself. He didn't think, what did God say? What does his word say? What does God want? Secondly, he left God out of his plans in verse 18. You notice how many times? 11 times, it's the possessive pronoun. I, 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 my, 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 my. It's just so much, it's personal planning. God's not in it. He left God out of his future dreams in verse 19. What did he dream of? Taking his ease, eating and drinking, being merry. What happens to those who leave God out of their thoughts and plans and dreams? They lose everything. See, that's what Jesus is warning about. That's what materialism does. Well, then verse 22, he says, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. What is rich toward God? It has two elements, and I wanna close with these thoughts. First of all, it has divestment. Divestment means that you transfer the ownership of everything back to the rightful owner. All I have has come from God. I was not even in existence till God allowed me to be and gave me an immortal soul and allowed me to come into this world. So I divest me ever thinking I own anything. It all belongs to him. Secondly, once you divest, you say, Lord, since all of that is yours, my time, my life, my treasures, everything I have, my wealth, I wanna invest it your way. Divesting the ownership and investing everything in my life for his glory. Now, it says in Revelation 3, there was a church that was, and I, I call this believers can get blinded by materialism, and we can. And the church in Laodicea was. And Jesus said, you know what? You're rich, you're increased with goods, and you don't realize that you're poor and miserable and wretched and naked and blind. So I counsel you, ask me to fix your eyes. You know, this morning we should respond to what Peter heard and what Peter responded to. Jesus said, beware of riches. 
divest yourself of thinking that they're yours. Say, Lord, they're not mine. I want to invest my life. Everything, including my body, belongs to you. And Jesus said, if you'll divest and invest, then you'll be rich toward me.